Welcome to Lisa's Painting Parties. I'm Lisa, and uh, we are going to be doing our weekly live uh, painting party tonight. Um, I hope uh, you are here to join us. If you're not able to, that's quite all right. You can always tune in um, afterwards. The recording will be up under the videos tab on the Facebook page or also on my YouTube channel under Lisa's Painting Parties, so you can always watch that. Um, whenever it is convenient for you. Um, tonight we are going to be attempting to paint from this beautiful photograph, courtesy of Michael Lyons Photography. Really, really pretty picture. A lot of interesting elements in here. It might, I think I'm, I'm excited for the challenge of it. It did scare me a bit, which is partially why I chose as one of the options, because I am trying to push myself out of my comfort zone a bit. And for those of you who have been following and have been watching my previous paint parties, I love to do a lot of like sky and water and landscape shots, um, which can be very forgiving. <laughs> and I think this one has a lot of capacity to, um, you can really go a bit more abstract with it and put a lot of personality in it. Um, but that also scares me a little bit. Um, so I'm excited to see um, how we will translate this one into our own painting image. So um, the way these uh, paint parties work for anyone who hasn't joined um, or for anyone who like a little refresher, um, basically every week um, I put up three options um, on Saturday at noon and everyone votes on the option that they prefer the most. Um, the one with the most votes by the following Tuesday at noon is the one that's the winner and then we um, paint it or I paint it and we do it all together on the Wednesday uh, evening. Um, for me, this is my, th I have never painted this before, so this will be my first venture, as are all my paint parties, and I basically talk through my approach of how I will go about recreating our inspiration image into a painting. So someone had mentioned at one point, it's kind of like a book club, and that is kind of like how it is, where um, I encourage everyone to take our inspiration image and make it your own. There are some really talented uh, people on here, so please, or, and even if you're, you're new or even if you've been doing this for a while, feel free to comment and give tips or tricks or say what's working, say what's not, whatever you like, um, and, um, and share because that's the most fun. So I love to see how everyone's interpreted it um, and, and goes from there. So I will go from my perspective and then we'll kind of go from there. Oh, thank you so much, Patty. How are you? I'm so glad you're joining. Um, so yeah, so that's how we go about doing it. And these uh, are all free. Um, so this is the 78th paint party that we've been doing. So if uh, you enjoy my approach to things and you like some of the paintings, you can definitely take a look and see. And you can again watch any of the videos um, on the Facebook page. And they're also on my YouTube channel as well. It's the same video. It's just whether you prefer one viewing option or the other. Um, they are the, they're there for you. Cool. So yeah, so um, and all the photos that I've been using um, since the beginning of July are provided by Michael Lyons Photography. So he is a local Canadian, uh, local Canadian. He is a local to me, I guess. It's, well, not even that local. It's about two hours away from me. <laughs> but he's based out of Burlington, um, Ontario. And um, he's a friend of mine who takes absolutely gorgeous shots. And he has um, given me permission to share those beautiful images with you and paint from them, um, which I love. Um, and I'm really um, honored to be able to paint uh, from his beautiful um, images that he captures. So those are all the images. So if you like his stuff and you have seen some of the work, um, you can definitely check out his site. The link is in the comments there below and you can see what other stuff he has. You can feel free to purchase things from him. He does like tons of different types of work. So if you're uh, are looking for a photographer, definitely reach out to him. He's, he's a great person, great to work with. Um, but for our purposes, we are going to take our artistic spin on this and, uh, and have fun with it tonight. So um, in terms of supplies, I always use acrylic paint. The paint I use is basic crafters acrylic, like dollar store kind of paint. Um, so I always say if I gear this towards brand new painters, um, so if you have your primary colors, your yellow, blue, and red, and white, and black, we can create anything from it. Um, if you have other types of colors that are already pre-mixed, that's totally fine as well, and you can always dip into it, and that's great. 
um but you don't need to feel overwhelmed when you're first starting out you can use your basics and we can mix any color from there and again i'll kind of talk through how we're going to approach it for this particular one we're obviously going to use a lot of black there may be some blue as well um some white to get some of the grays going and then getting this nice yellow um there's some brown as well so i can also explain how to mix um, a brown from the primary colors um and this stem is like a nice ready orange and again this is the inspiration so if you want to make your leaf a totally different color if you want to make your water look different go nuts have fun with it um and enjoy the process and, and make your own version of it so in terms of paint that's what we got there i also suggest having um three paintbrush sizes but really if you have a variety of paintbrush sizes like use whatever is comfortable for you um for me i like to have one that gives me a lot of coverage so a nice large brush the canvas that i'm using is an 11 by 14 canvas board so the big brush that I'm using is a size 10 and it's like a, a flat round brush. Um, and it's just because it has is no other purpose besides I like the softness of the bristles and it gives me really good coverage um, on my entire canvas. Um, and then I suggest having a medium size and I alternate between um, this one, which is a size four and this one that's a size two. And they're also like flat, they're kind of not really that round on the top, but those are the ones I usually use for like my medium size brush. And then if you have something else for like fine detail, so this one it is actually a size four, but when it has water on the tip, it actually creates a nice really fine tip on it. So just use whatever is convenient for you. This one will have a little bit of fine detail in it, um, like with some of the vining in the leaf. Um, but yeah, we can go with any of those options, it's all good. I also have a couple of water containers. I usually have two, especially when you're using anything that has a lot of really dark colors, your water will get dirty really fast and you don't want to um, have to keep switching it out. So I usually have two available. And then something to like put your paint on or to mix your paint and that's my paint palette that I have here. And of course, um, also just paper towel. Um, acrylic is water-based paint. So I tend to use water quite a bit in terms of um, just rinsing off my brushes. Um, and so the, yeah, I, I use paper towel a lot for that. Cool. Um, so that is kind of the lay of the land for this evening. Um, if you are enjoying the paint parties, you can feel free to leave me a tip. There's a link right in the bottom there for buy me a coffee. It's totally optional. You do not have If you can see me and you can see this, we are going to get started right here. So um, sometimes there's like weird scammy links that pop up. Um, don't click that. I think I've never, I haven't actually clicked them to see exactly how it goes. I don't know if they just get, um, you know, points or benefits from the, the like the clicks or if they're actually getting like credit card numbers or something. I'm not exactly sure. Um, just know that if you can see me, we're good to go. <laughs> so don't click on any random links, okay? And as you're going, feel free to comment um, and um, I will keep an eye on it. Do you have questions, um, anything you want to share, feel free. I'm coming to you from um, Ajax, Ontario. So it's just outside of Toronto, about half an hour from Toronto. Um, it's actually decent. It's been really muggy, so that's been not so great. Hope everyone's having a good summer and uh, gearing up for back to school. Hi, Kim. Glad you're joining. Fantastic. So, oh, there's a, is that that light? Yeah, it is. Okay. I'll move my camera angle in a moment and then you won't have that there. I will move my um, camera so then you can be able to see my canvas more directly because you won't need to see me specifically when we're painting. You'll want to see my canvas a bit more. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. I'll just start getting this set up. We'll get started in a few minutes just to make sure that anyone else who um, wants to join tonight is able to jump on and do so. Oh, thank you, Kim. Yeah, last week, um, the paint party that I had scheduled for the Wednesday, I ended up canceling it because I had a, a really bad migraine. So I decided, uh, yeah, I just it was, <laughs> I wasn't able to uh, properly be fully invested and uh, and be here to paint for you. So I ended up switching it to the Thursday. I still did the, the session on Thursday morning. So the video from last week is up if anyone wanted to um, paint along with that one. Get this back up on my iPad so we can go from there. Okay. Okay. 
So with this one, I am going to be using it on the um, landscape portrait, not for landscape portrait, landscape orientation um, to capture this image. The leaf is quite large, um, but you can decide how you want to approach it. If you have a smaller type of canvas too, you can do that. Or if you'd want to do like a, in the portrait mode, feel free, whatever works, whatever floats your boat, go for it. Hi, Sue from Tennessee. Amazing. I love it. I love, what I love about this is that there's so many people from all over the place that get to uh, jump in and, and say hi and watch. So it's always fun to see that. Um, the one thing I don't like about this is just that I can't actually in the moment see your paintings or give you feedback or like collaborate more directly. That's the one thing that kind of sucks about it. But uh, hi, Donna. Yes, all my videos are available after the live, so everything's on my Facebook um, page, so you can go under the videos tab and everything is there from all the previous parties and also on my YouTube channel as well. And Rula, hi Rula. Okay, sounds good. So Rula, her paintings are lovely. She's painted many times with us and um, I can't wait to see yours, Rula. She always has really cool styles. I'm so excited. And Jody, hi Jody. I love this pic too. Uh, no worries. And Jody has painted a few with us before too, and she she does really well too. I love it. I love to see all your pictures and how you guys, um, mostly ladies, I should say. <laughs> I ever like it's a lot of a lot of women. When I was looking at the stats. It's like mostly women watch, and it's like I think like two percent were men. <laughs> so there's any men watching? Hello. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was uh, kind of funny. But yeah, thank you. I'm so glad that you jumped in and said hi, Jody. Okay, cool. So, okay, now, oh, are you working? Yeah, and everyone's getting back into the flow of like, when I started the paint parties, I started it um, last year when I was laid off, and a lot of people had a lot more time, <laughs> so I think the parties were um, a lot more full, like we would have a lot of people watching live, and there was a lot more happening. And I think everyone's just home, and now everyone's back to the grind. It's about late. Oh, I don't think that's going to happen, is it? Something like that's okay without it unplugging. Perfect. Perfect enough. I don't know about perfect, but still going to create some shadows. But c'est la vie until I become a, a famous painter with like a full on like video studio and all that we're going to have to deal with the shadows that are happening <laughs> oh it's been two months Jody holy baloney I didn't realize it's been that long yeah you were you were joining like consistently I was like Yeah, I think a lot of people are in that boat, though. Like, it's tricky to balance our passions and enjoyments with having to, like... Well, even now, I think more people are, becoming, are a bit more social right now, too, because we've been locked down for so long. Well, I don't know about all of you guys, but, um, you know, it's been just like you can't see people, see family, and now it's like, oh, finally, it's nicer weather. Let's get out. Let's see people. I feel like I've been, like, way more social, and it's almost, like, tiring social. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm not used to this anymore. Okay, so what do I want to do to start? Okay, I think what I want to do is um, I want to start by, in pencil, I want to just kind of line, just for me to visually understand where I want this leaf to live on here. Um, yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Because it does take up quite a bit. I am still going to work on the background first um, once I kind of sketch that in. And it will probably go over my line. But I think that will just help me make sure I, I, I kind of know where I want things to land. So if I look at the image here, it does, it, it's, it's huge on it. So it's going to be a quite a big maple leaf. Um, so it looks like it's going to be like the tip of it's going to be kind of here. The base is going to be about here. It's about, yeah. So it's about, if we look at where this point here is, I try to, 
think of this and put this position the original image almost like into a grid and that helps whenever you're trying to scale something up or replicate something and so in my mind I'm visualizing this kind of broken off into you know basically for the first thing I do is I kind of say okay let's split this in half and then split this down the middle and where do things land right so this point here is slightly above and to the right of the middle of your canvas. And so I kind of want to think about that when I position it here. And again, I'm not going to worry so much about it being like super precise, but I still want to have it in a similar spot. So if I say like this is the middle here and that's the middle coming down there, I want that to be kind of somewhere like here-ish, maybe a little bit higher, maybe like here-ish. Yeah, I think like about there is kind of where I want that point to be, right? And then we have this tip here, which is quite close to the edge, right? And if we break this down, so if we say, okay, like that's the middle, and that's half, and that's half, that's almost, I would say that's a bit lower than a quarter of the canvas. So if we say this is about half more or less, and that's a quarter, it's actually going to come a little bit further in than where that quarter line is. So we want that tip to land somewhere like here, more or less. Okay? Just to get an idea of where that is. This is how my brain works. If it works for you, cool. If you have your own ways, that's totally fine too. Um, okay, so now I want to think about that. So this tip this middle point here where the stem is, the, the line kind of does come all the way down to that tip. So I do want this to be pretty, I'm just going to put a not perfect line, but a line there, down to the tip there. So that's where that middle spot is there. And then we have this point here. So this point here, so we have that, we have the tip here. It's a little bit further down, so it's closer to the bottom of the canvas. And then if we look again in the middle range, the middle is about here. So it's like if we break this up into six, so if we say, okay, so this is like the middle, okay, and we say like this would be one, two, three, it's going to end up being about here. Okay, and that's going to be another point of the leaf. I'm just going to do that. And similarly, I just want to mark out that point, and that point again also is further in, so it's going to come inward, but this is almost, where's the middle of the canvas? Like here? So it's almost the middle. It's kind of like, so here's the middle, it's a little bit above the middle, it's about here. Yeah, let's say like here. So I'm just going, oh, that's not the point I wanted. Oh, you know, oh, I used the wrong point. Oh, well, that's fine. Look at this. That's good. Now we use that point. No big deal. Okay, cool. So that's kind of where that leaf is going to be. So, and we can do the same thing for the indents here if you want to go that route too. So if we say like this indent here, it kind of comes about here more or less and this one comes about here no it actually comes a little bit more like here I think so I'm just gonna go with like arrowy points right now and then it's, gonna, it's probably gonna look like a marijuana leaf <laughs> to start <laughs> whatever floats your boat I am gonna I am still gonna make it a Canadian leaf say Canadian it's a maple leaf I know but you know that's that's what that's our symbol here okay. and then we have so then the point here comes like here more or less and then we have it comes out like here and then there's another point here 
And that is in relation to... We have a little bit more left. And that's going to kind of come out. And that's going to come... Kind of like that ish. Can you see that? Not really. Okay, so there's my drawing of the leaf with my points just to get an idea of where it's going to land. We'll see how it goes. We might change it up when we actually put the leaf in fully. And again, it's going to be covered. We're going to play with the water and have all this fun. And then this stem. I like to do this just so that my brain kind of decides if I like where it is and I can always change it up as we go. Oh, just got home from Minnesota for my son's house. Can't take painting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would be a lot of extra baggage to bring all your painting supplies with you. Absolutely. I understand that. Hi, Kathy. Canning tomatoes. No way. That's so cool. Oh, that's no problem. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and thank you so much for buying me a coffee, Kathy. That's really sweet of you. Kathy keeps my coffee addiction going. <laughs> I appreciate you, Kathy. Thank you. Um, yeah, we don't. I've never canned tomatoes. So I, that's that's pretty smart, actually. I know we do um, like a big. I don't know if you do this, Kathy, um, but um, we do um, like peppers. So we do a whole. Uh, in like the when 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 does when do we normally do it? It's like September October, I think. Or maybe it's or maybe it's early September actually. I think it's coming up soon. So it's like the red pepper. So you make like the red pepper um, sauce. We call it like a pepper sauce, uh, pimenta. So my mom does that every year um, or almost every year. Sometimes there's still a lot from the year prior, and that's like a whole process. It's yeah, it's intense. But everyone loves it. And it goes in, like, almost everything we eat. Like, we use that in, like, everything. <laughs> but that, that's just what it reminded me of when you mentioned that. Okay. So, we got this We got this guy going. Okay. So, I'm going to start by putting some black paint on my palette. Definitely going to need more than that. Remember, too, like, I have a tendency sometimes I want to make sure I put enough paint in the moment to, like, do it. But acrylic can dry really quickly. You can always add more to your palette, so don't don't feel that pressure that <laughs> I do at times. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of white too. I'll like show you how much paint I'm putting on my palette in a moment. But again, it's kind of in relation to what um, size your palette is. So I have quite a bit of black and a little bit of white there. Okay. So what I'm thinking is. I know in my head, if I think too hard that I'm trying to make this look like water, I feel like I'm going to get very trapped in that and that it's not going to turn out the way I want it to turn out. So I'm going to approach this more as trying to get the patterns and the feelings of it down. So I do want it to have black. I want it to have this kind of like smoky kind of like willow wispy white kind of grayish vibes coming in um and there is like there's a little bit of like almost like a light blue there's a little bit of darker blue that kind of pokes through in there too so I want to capture some of that um so yeah that's where my thought pattern is you can't butter I've never heard of that Kathy no way Kathy just wrote that just in case if you're watching this on Facebook that cheese canned green beans and butter. I've, I've never, that, that is, that's impressive. I had no idea. I'm a prepper. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, we need you to stay there. I'm going to just jump right in. I, I'm a little scared about this painting. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So, I'm just going to put some black on here. Start getting, just, just to... 
get rid of it being that whole blank canvas kind of fear. Once we start going, then we'll enjoy. So I wanted to put some black on here. trying to get the sides of the canvas as I'm doing this too. Okay, I'll throw in a little bit of white and see what happens. It's just going to become kind of grayish. It's not really going to be what I want it to be yet, I don't think, but it's okay. And I think I need to get a, a base coat on here first of mostly black. colors afterwards. So I want to just basically cover my canvas so I can't see my canvas underneath. So I'm just going to start off this process with, I'm going to try to keep some of the elements of my leaf, but knowing that I'll change it up. Just go with black fully. I'm sure there's a little bit of white, but it's I mean, it's not bad. Just play a little bit more with it. It's gonna feel like a sky. I feel like if I do too much, I go into like my cloud mode. You know. All nice and black. I guess you could also go with like a dark blue if you would rather. Like a midnighty blue. Black. Like my heart. No. <laughs> Not really. Not exactly. Okay. Okay, so black, blackness. Now, dun, 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 dun. okay, I am going not, I'm not going to use this big, huge brush anymore. I'm going to switch to my like medium size. And that water is completely. 
I can't use that water anymore, but that's all right. That water is a very dark. I just want to try to get some of the, the paint from my brush because I don't want it to dry in the brush because that can ruin your brushes um, or just not have them last as long, you know. I'm trying to be more cautious and careful about my brushes. All right. So this kind of, it's kind of a gray, but I feel like there's a little bit of a blue tinge to it. So I, 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 I think I'm going to put a little bit of blue on my palette. And I'm going to use like a medium, maybe my number two brush. That's the one that's a bit smaller, a bit more control. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put a little bit of blue in my white to get kind of like a, a very light, 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 light blue. And this is still kind of wet, so I'm going to play with this and see. I don't know if, how this is going to work. You can watch me first, and if it works out well, then do it. If it works out badly, then we can try something else. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get some of this, these smoky-ish lines happening. Oh, man, yeah. Because the paint is still very wet on the bottom, it really is not showing up at all. So I'm just going to put a bit more paint on here. I'm going to put like little lines. I feel like the blue is not coming up at all. Like it just looks very white. And I want it to have a little bit of... If it doesn't happen, it's okay. I need to keep refilling the paint on my brush constantly. The black just overtakes it every time, so it's still wet. Maybe I should just wait till it dries, but I'm too impatient for that. This is not a cloud. Feels like a cloud. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think I need to be more patient. Wait until it dries a bit more. I wonder if there's an area that's a bit more dry that we can play with. Maybe a little bit on this side. Just a little bit more. Put in. little lines. Little lines of white. Corn! That's amazing! Doomsday Prepper! <laughs> oh, no way! I didn't realize those shit. I didn't realize it lasted for five years. That's pretty cool, Kathy. Hi, Trish! It does actually, I could see that. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it does. It does kind of look like there's like some ripples happening to make it feel like more like it's over a rock or something. I agree. Okay, let's see if, no, it's still pretty wet at the bottom. Aye, aye, aye. I gotta wait till it dries more so I can get this going. 
was hoping to get the smokiness happening. I thought I would need it to be more wet, but perhaps not. going over it a little bit just so it's not blended in fully with the black. Now it's very smart though to prep food and I think that's a really good idea. I think about that like I think about how last year when um, we did have to go in lockdown and how everyone just went crazy to buy toilet paper and a bunch of other products. Um, but I remember thinking too, like our food supply chain, kind of a scary thing, right? Like we're so reliant on uh, everything being at our grocery stores for us. So if that breaks down, whoa. That's scary, scary thoughts, you know? So I think it's really smart if you're able to, to be, to have, to have those skills, absolutely, and to be able to prep. Because you never know, especially the weather's been so erratic too, like, it's good to have like stockpile a little bit of things, you know, just in case. I'm digging this yet. I don't know. I feel like I'm too in my head about it. Okay. Let's see. Let me put some of this blue. Okay. Hmm. Part of me wants to put in the leaf and then. around after which seems a lot of backwards than what I normally do. like dabbing it slightly with my brush just to get like a little color blotches happening. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I'm just going to try and see. In worst case, we're going to just repaint it with the black. We all get to go. <laughs>
All right. It is. Ah, crap. I want to be able to keep my light so I can maybe like that. But then I might give more of a shadow. Thanks, Kathy. I appreciate you mentioning that. There we go. So at least it's not on the iPad anymore, which is good. So you can kind of use it as a more of a guide that way. I feel like then it's going to give me a bit of a shadow, but that's okay. It's okay. What can we do? Just enjoy the process. Going back with black in some areas and just touching it up a little bit. I think I want to move on and start doing some of the leaf and then go back to my water afterwards. That is what I'm going to do. This is a nice, really pretty, pretty color, which I don't exactly have. I do have a yellow. Um. I have two different types of yellows. I have like a daffodil yellow and I have a bright yellow. I think the bright yellow, that's the one I normally go with. Because the daffodil yellow has like some white pigment in it, I think. And it's a lot, it has like a, it's a little bit like duller slightly. And then I put a little bit of red as well, a little dot on the side. Just so I can play with that too. Okay, so I think to start... I'm just going to start putting yellow in here. Mm, I want a bigger brush than that. That brush is too small. Oh, smart, Valerie. Yeah, absolutely. Doing oil pastels is a great idea. I haven't played with my oil pastels in way too long. That just made me feel like I wanted to play with them. <laughs> okay, let's just get this guy covered. If I was my yellow, regardless which one I use, I can still see my pencil lines under it. Which is okay in this situation because I'm going to be using it to put in some of the veining of the leaf. But that can be not so great at times. Ooh. Especially if like, you just kind of sketched it a little bit more or it didn't turn out, you know, exactly how you wanted it to. Okay. So, I don't know if I want to go with this, but I'm going to try.
skip over it. Let's put back a more fine point. looking at the inspiration of it and just trying to mimic some of the points. one of these looks a very horrible at the moment. Oh, we're gonna just keep going and see what happens. An acrylic always looks kind of funky. Even you know as we as we keep going through the process it kind of I'm going to switch to my thinner brush to do some of these points. Oh yes, uh, Jordy was saying that uh, they also have watercolor pencils. They, I have those are very fun. And Valerie's here in Minnesota. Awesome. And that's where you were just coming from, Jody, I think, right? It was in the Minnesota that you were just coming from? Yeah, super cool. We were both in the area together. <laughs> Absolutely. And Valerice just won um, some ribbons at a fair for some of her beautiful paintings. So congratulations, Valerice. I'm so glad you shared that. When I saw that, I was so happy. It made my day. <laughs> it's so cool. Okay, yes. Thinner brush, I have so much more control. I know why I fight it so much. Like sometimes I'm just like, no, I need to use my thicker brushes and make it harder on myself. Like why do I do that? I use my thinner brush and I'm like, oh yes, here we go. <laughs> so much easier. It's like annoying though too. I feel like I have to get paint all the time on my my thinner brushes but at the same time it takes so much more control over it
definitely made them a bit too wide. You know what? I'm gonna have to get the black paint and like touch these up. That's what I'm gonna do. That is the answer. I'm realizing I just made it too much of a like. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I have to do. Okay, black paint. Get over here. Okay. Yes. Silly me. Okay, so I think over here I like this shape. Uh, I like that. That's all wet too. That's not going to work very well. I need to get the ones that are a bit drier. Okay, so like here. That kind of looks alright. Okay, so like here I want it to be a bit thinner. No way, Kathy. Oh, that's so disappointing. She's just saying that uh, there's a hailstorm that just beat down in the garden. That's sad. Hopefully nothing got damaged. I'm sure like a little bit did, I'm, I'm guessing, with hail, but hopefully nothing too bad happened. A little better. Okay, let's make some shapes happen here. Okay, and then we need to come kind of like that. Okay. Let's 
a little bit, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Take some here and I'll make that better with the black. So the black is working a lot nicer to get me a better shape. That is for sure. Black is your friend. Perfect. That's good. And what are we doing here? I want this guy to go in more. This one to come in more. Kind of like that, I think. Sure. jokes. It's not as like pointy as the other one, but that's okay. And then I think I want this to go in a little bit more. Whoosh. And a little bit here. Okay. Um yeah, that's way better. Okay, no, that's all I'm going to do about it, I think, for now. Okay, so the shape is much better now that we... And I'm digging in the weird lines that I put around it, too. <laughs> it's kind of looking more like water and stuff, so that's good. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. That sucks. Some here in the northern part of the states. Oh yeah, there's still some smoke there too, eh, Valerie's? There's a lot of like fires all over the place, but in Ontario, there's been more fires, which is very, very sad. It's affecting. You guys are getting quite a bit of that smoke. I know in BC it's horrible. There are some pictures that were being shared on social media. I mean, it was like eerily beautiful because the sky was like this orangey red and there's all different shades happening from all across the province. So like gorgeous, but also like terrifying. You know, that's not the color it's supposed to be. Just going through like the um, some spots where I put yellow on top of the black background, and so I'm just you can still very much see that like the black through it. So I'm just making them a little bit more yellow. In some spots. Okay, and then we need to play with this as well. Put some more. It looks very white on the iPad, but I promise you it is it is yellow. Okay. I think I also want to put my stem in. I want to get all the components in and then we can go and have fun with details. I'm just going to get red. I'm just going to my paint's already saying bye bye. Of an orange. 
country, I suppose. I've got a little bit of yellow and I'm just putting it um, on top of this red line I made. So the colors kind of blend a bit. And it kind of becomes more of an orangey and I just need to make this little base has to be a little thicker here. Kind of like that I think. It's got a little bit of yellow on here too. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Okay, so how do we want to play with this? leaf. Hmm. I kind of want to put in the lines of it right now, but I feel like we need to get some like highlights and colors going on here first. I'm not sure I'm a little torn by that. So let's, I'm just going to put some white into my yellow. I just want to make it a little bit lighter. almost like a full white and I see that there's some a little bit lighter like here here a little bit lighter here a little bit of highlight into my leaf with the lighter, put a little bit of white in the yellow and then that's what I'm using. And I'm just looking at the inspiration image and I'm just looking at where it's a bit lighter. I'm just touching it a bit with the lighter. I think we should do the same and make it a little darker too. So I'm going to put a little bit of red to get kind of an orangey color. Oosh, it's very peachy. I don't know if I like that. I'll try it a bit and then if it doesn't work then I'll change it up. There's a little bit of color here. There's a little bit of this Darker, the brown. It's not really like this peachy color I just made. Kind of in this area. A little bit of darker spots here. Okay. Let's get 
with the yellow back. And let's pop it back in. But there it is. I just want to get some of the differences happening, and then I want to put in the ribbing and stuff. Once I have some of these color variations in, it looks so weird. It's like so windy. I'm just going with some of the darker colors and I'm just going over with yellow just to dull it out a bit. It is, it's kind of a coral, but that wasn't really my intention. It just, I was trying to get more of an orangey color, but my red being from the dollar store, um, it already has a bit of, um, I guess like white kind of mixed into it. So it became a bit coral. But I'm not hating it, so. I don't really want to do like a full on brown. Like I put like a, a little dab of black into that weird coral color that I made. And it gave me kind of this. Ooh, that, that is, that's too much. I don't want to do that. Come back to me. I do want to put a little bit more in some of these areas here. All right, so that's kind of, that's what I've done so far with the leaves. I've put just different, try to look at the inspiration image I'm doing the background before I put in some of the vining. And I think once I put in the vining, it will pop, it will make a bit more sense and I can always touch up a bit more where I want some of those details to go. Okay, so I'm gonna use my thin brush. 
I don't want to do black. I definitely want to do more of a like really dark brown or something. I think I'm going to put a little bit of black into my red and get like a really, yeah, I think that's the color I want to go with. It's like very dark, but I think that will look better. It won't be as like, boom, you know? All right, so where do I want to go first? I think I just want to put in the little vine that happens like right here and there. And then another one kind of comes up to this point. It comes in. And this one comes out, but then it kind of disappears, doesn't it? I'm going to make the one that comes out to this point, almost, that point, that's my plan. Okay. Let's do the one that comes out to this one here. It's tricky because my paint is not super smooth and then it, it dries out almost before I can get a nice opaque line all the way down. So I kind of need to go over it, but I also don't really want to thicken up the line very much. I just want it to be a bit more smooth. Okay. And then this one here. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Kathy. It's definitely like I, I feel like I, I don't feel like I definitely hold my breath, <laughs> especially doing it upright. Um, if it's flat down, I'm a lot more confident. But yeah, whew, I have to like make sure I breathe. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, where is that one? Okay, let's do that kind of curvy one. That's like, ooh. It makes sounds, it does make it easier. That was very straight. I don't know about that one. Everyone. 
Oh my, I just put paint on you. And where did you go? Good question. Sometimes it's going to happen, and it's not going to be the way you want it. Okay, and then, I'm totally with my hand on top of wet paint. I know it, I'm really doing it now. As long as I don't smear it, I guess, right? I guess that's okay. Okay, and then... So when I'm doing the vining, I'm like looking at the inspiration image, but the way it is, it basically goes, um, they're not like, the vines don't go as like a V shape, right? It's almost alternating. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to make them not all like straight lines or all the same curved line. I'm, they're all kind of wonky and different and weird. And that's what makes it more natural looking. So try to do that as well. Like try to watch yourself from just be making like the same pattern over and over again because then it's not going to look as um, like real, realistic. I'm gonna put another one in here. I'll go to this tip kind of. Yeah, once you put the like the vining, it really I think pops a lot more. And then now some of the shading and some of the stuff that we did before kind of shows up a little bit nicer. And again, it's not perfect. There's definitely ways we can make it a lot more precise in terms of having the shading match, like what's going on on the other side. Um, but I feel pretty happy for my purposes, like the way it looks. Like, I'm, I'm good with this. I want to probably do a little bit more, like, I just want to make some of the tips. So I'm going to go a little bit weird. Like that. Good. Oh, I see a little bit where I put some yellow hopes. smeared a bit in some spots. Okay. Yeah, like, I really wanted to capture this, like, really dark line here, and I don't feel like I did that at all. I don't know if I want to... And I kind of want to try to, but I'm scared I'm going to ruin it. Scary dark. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, I'm gonna try it and see. Let's see what we can do with this. Mm 
let's, let's see. What's the worst that's going to happen, right? We just paint over it. So I keep telling you guys I should follow the same advice. Try something different. I'll try to put the shadow in. So I'm using that uh, that reddish that I use. I put a little bit more yellow into it and then I'm trying to blend it into the background with a bit more yellow but still trying to keep it a little darker. I'm kind of going back and forth with it. Hmm, I need a little bit of water to blend it down. That could work. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I have the the YouTube stuff going on in the background, like the nature sounds, but it's very quiet. It was kind of distracting me before. Oh, bye, Jody. See you later. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jody. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Again, I didn't. I I really was unsure about how it was going to be. <laughs> I'm always pretty honest with all of you. I, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, let's let's see what happens. Okay, I want to play a little bit in the back with some of the water because I, I didn't put in any of the blue that I wanted to capture and I want to go back in and do that and make a few of these a little bit of blue kind of shining in but I don't know how that's going to work but we're going to try and see if we can make it work and if it doesn't it's okay too. these little I think too like around the leaf there are little like lines in the water to show the that it's been disturbed right so I'm going to put that in as best as I can. In the front here, yeah, there's some Okay. So I'm just trying to see how get the inspiration so I can get the lines kind of right as to where they come from. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
That's what I'll, that's working nicely, I think. Well, I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> Quick and decent, and I'm, I'm I, yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. I know there's more, like, ripples that are happening, but I don't know if I want to, I don't know. I do want to actually put a few more in. Maybe we'll just put a few more, kind of, like, in here. Yeah, that's a little better to put a little daddy that's in on there. The water ripples happening. here too, I think. Yes. All right. I'm, yeah, I think I am going to say I am done for now. Yes. For real now. <laughs> Not just like I did it a second ago and then I continued on. So there we go. So here is my completed version of it. I'll snap a picture of it too and I'll put it in a separate post so you can check it out if you'd like to see it a bit more clearer. Um, if you've joined in, please, oh, I noticed a little bit where I stamped some black there with my hand when I was painting something else. <laughs> kind of make sure I get that part. Perfect. So thank you all for joining me this evening. Um, if uh, you painted along, please snap a picture of yours and share it as well. If you're painting um, another time as well, please do so. I'd love to check out to see how you've made it your own, um, photo, the photos made your own painting. Um, so please uh, do that. And um, I will see you all again next week. On Saturday, there'll be three more options for you all to vote on. And the one with the most votes by the Tuesday at noon will be the one that we all paint together next Wednesday. All right. Have a fantastic rest of your day and a good week. Bye, everyone.